You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now talking about a presidential directive that is causing a stare. In reaction to all the issues regarding security in Nigeria, all the kidnapping of schoolgirls, the abduction of travelers, the you know burning of houses, and everything that is just so immoral and inhumane happening in Nigeria, especially in the northern part of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari has issued a directive to security agencies asking them to shoot any bandits they see carrying AK-47 on site. Lots of people have been reacting to this, you know, giving their support or condemnation of this directive. And we have now joining us a human rights lawyer as well as uh, the founder of AfriLaw. Uh, let's bring in Chiwike Okiriki now. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Okay, reacting to this comment, the Arawa Consultative Forum, we also have the Minority Leader of the House of Representatives, Menwe State Governor Samuel Otum, you know, saying that this directive by President Muhammadu Buhari will, you know, reduce crime and criminality. And this is the, the, the governor of Benue now, I'm reading his, his comment. He said, this will reduce the high rate of criminality, banditry, militia headsmen attacks on our farming communities. Do you back them on these comments? Uh, um, I understand the... the I, I, I understand the, the challenge in, and the, the government is having to tackle insecurity. Uh, we understand also the enormity of weight, of responsibility on the president to, 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 to tackle this is, uh, issue and to handle it decisively. But um, we, we have to be careful the way we go about it. We even know, even we know that these are criminals. We know what they are doing is against law. But this is a democratic government. We have to do it in a, a democratic way, which means, you know, the law enforcement agents, security forces, should go about their business within the confines of the law. The law did not uh, permit you to just shoot somebody outside if there is no a uh, commensurate force against you. You know, we we. We have uh, breaches of law enforcement officials have uh, effects on the law enforcement uh, work. So when there is a breach of human rights or rule of law, it also have a very big effect on the work they do. And uh, ultimately, it's going to, to affect the society. Right. So the, where we know, where we are challenged, where everybody is condemning what is happening, we are not supporting the criminals or the armed bandits but we are saying that uh, the security uh, sector should be governed in a, in a democratic way. You know, that's what they call democratic control of armed forces or security forces. We, it has to be done in a more civilized manner. So if we don't do it that way, it will be like as if we are at war. Right. We are not at war. That's okay, okay. So if we are not at we do it in a proper way within the confines of the law. All right. How would you address those who say desperate times call for desperate measures? We've, you know, over time tried to do it within the ambits of the law, like you've, you know, just uh, mentioned. Uh, we've over time tried to, of course, let our security agencies work, but it doesn't seem to be working. Um, and so desperate times call for desperate measures. Maybe it is time that we went this far in order to solve this cancer in our system. Uh, how would you, you know, respond to that? The, the, the issue is this. Uh, I want to read to you uh, the number nine of uh, basic principles on the use of force and firearms by law enforcement. UN basic principles on the use of force and firearms by law enforcement uh, officials. All right. Number nine says law enforcement officials shall not use firearms against persons except in self defense on defense of others against the uh, of against the immediate threat of death or serious injury to prevent the perpetration of a particular serious crime involving grave threats to life to arrest a person persecuting such making that situation or bringing that danger and resisting the authority or to prevent his or her escape 
and only when less extreme means are insufficient to achieve this objective. In any event, intentional use of leader force may only be made when strictly unavoidable yes. in order to protect life. Yeah. So if it's unavoidable, if they are being attacked, if there is need to use it to yeah. prevent so, so, okay, I, think, I think we, we, we accept what the not to shoot at yeah we accept not what the, what the law says somebody's... yeah mr Okereke, we accept what the law says there's also the geneva convention that clearly states you know um how you know people should be treated even in war situations you know if they are surrendering if they are no longer you know um, the risk you know then they should be arrested and not summarily executed but what I'm, I'm asking you to address is those who say um, desperate times call for desperate measures. Um, maybe, of course, we've tried so you know hard, you know, and those you know walking around what the law says is not working. So uh, it's high time we we went this far. What are your your views on that? Yeah, desperate times call for desperate measures. We understand that, but uh, what are the measures? Is it only one measure? Is should aside the measure. We, we can only use to achieve objective that has because the, this uh, desperate time has brought to us. I think that is uh, uh, the federal government should should be more serious about this. Uh, this uh, you know, the, to fight these people is not is not just one one ended means. There is issue of intelligence. The issue of uh, of um, of uh, equipping the armed forces to necessarily. I do the work that they're supposed to do. There's issue of motivation. There's a lot of the measures that are required to, to, to tackle this issue. And um, and uh, we have seen over the years that uh, the federal government have been reluctant to do what they're supposed to do. It has to check the uh, public outcry for them to reduce the leadership of the executive force. So what I'm saying is that, yes, we are, we have, we are in a desperate situation, but the to you to to command of shoot our sides is not the desperate measure to combat this situation we have to bring every every other measures on in, into play we need to equip the, our forces we need to use intelligence and these guys are our they are part of us Let's can't we it. penetrate the camp can't we assess them can't we use hard how possible? How is it possible that the U.S. forces came into Nigeria and rescued their, their adopted uh, US, U.S. citizens without any noise about it? Can't we improve our security forces to be able to do this kind of work? To be able to know where these guys are, are Mr. Okay, and okay. attack them before? Mr. Okay, okay. Well, but not to shoot. I'm sorry, Mr. Okay, okay. We're running out of time, and I wanted to, you to address uh, this issue. Many Nigerians fear that this shoot on sight order that the president has given might be abused and that it could be used to justify extrajudicial killings. Is that one of the fears right. you have about right. this? Yes, that's what I, when, that's what I thought about uh, security governance, security sector government. We have to improve security sector governance. And, uh, and uh, it means that the security issue operations and management should be within the confines of the law. The rule of law should, should, be, should guide whatever we are doing. So if in the democratic sector, the security forces are meant to tackle the criminalities and crimes within the state, within the country, it has to be done in, within the confines of rule of law and respect for human rights. So before you know it, you know, how do answers come about? Is this not this kind of situation where you encourage the security people, personnel to start shooting aside? Obviously, abuse is inevitable. And the abuse of power, abuse of power is something that the security forces are always intending to. So, we, there's a need to have oversight, there's a need to have accountability, there's a need to make sure that the security forces do their work in an effective and accountable way, even we are trying to achieve the mandate and objective. So that is the that is the essence of uh, law enforcement. Right. So if you know, we are we want to tackle the the, the, the evil that have befallen us, we have to do it within the ambit of the law. Right. And that's what makes it that's what makes us a democratic uh, um, um, nation.
we wow. don't we this is not a military regime right. even it's under okay. a military regime you have to operate within the the extent uh, what the law has provided all right so uh, even uh, as a good prisoner, thing you they right. still have their fundamental right was that okay okay uh, great you mentioned the NSAR's uh, protests and uh, some would argue that you know this is almost similar to endorsing extrajudicial killings uh, uh, again but um, but I, I want us to go back to something you know that um, went pretty much viral a few days before this order was given and that is a video of a former president Tolishego Basanjo who gave a similar order when uh, um, the country was dealing with uh, OPC uh, crisis back then. Um, do, 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 what, what are your thoughts um, basically on that order um, and repeating the same order today? Um, that was, of course, during Obasanjo's tenure as president. Um, he gave similar orders. And, of course, a few days after that, our president uh, currently, Muhammad Aguari, is giving a similar order. And so, you know, if we could use it back then, what's wrong with using it now? I think the, the the problem we're having is that because of uh, a lot of uh, uh, the, the military influence in our democratic process. That was one of the key bearing of the pain of our democracy. That when we have um, nationalized and rationalized uh, the use of force to achieve our objective, it, you know, it, it, in the market, I'm, I'm, we, need, we, should, we shall never forget that this is a democratic government. This is a democratic nation that operates a democratic government. So, and if we have a former president made that order, he also appreciate that he's also a military, uh, from, he's a military general, a former military general. And it, it, it's not uh, out of order that uh, the current president is making the same order because he's also a former military general. So that is the, that is the challenge we're going to have. You know, even if we are, they, are wearing, uh, they are wearing a civilian clothes and under a democratic setting, there's, there's a tendency for them to to misplace priority and misplace some certain issues. There is no way you will call for shoot on our side of criminals in a democratic setting. It's never done anywhere. The operations of state forces must be done within the confines of the rule of law. You don't do it. It's never done in any democratic setup and society. And a place where the rule of law is champion. I'm not... Um, I'm, I'm, uh, we are not, uh, uh, I'm not surprised. If, if you remember, one time, the president uh, was uh, a special guest during the Nigerian Bar Association uh, annual conference. And he made this um, kind of assertion that human rights is subject to security. And uh, yeah, you know, that is good. And people will shout. We will not blame him because of his background. So, but what we are saying is that even if that these orders are coming, this order is not proper, appropriate. It is out of uh, shape and it shouldn't be accepted. Let the, the security forces be, uh, be equipped. Not now. This is what they should have done before now. Okay. Proper funding, proper motivation, proper capacity, proper leadership to tackle all these insecurities that will be developed. Okay. They, have, they have not done all this, all this while. Now they want to have a bring a magic uh, um, um, uh, plan. There is no shortcut for this. Issue. All right, Mr. Okereke. We Okereke. cannot get this. Mr. Okereke. By social side order. So basically, you're saying you're picking arrest and prosecute over shoot on site. Okay. Yes. Let me tell you. There is um, the, the 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 proper thing to do is that apprehend the criminals and create the process of the law for us. So we, we can never, let us never respect this. No, no matter how overwhelmed we are with this situation, let us, let us not respect or uh, misinterpret or uh, let emotions carry out out of the out of order. This is a democratic government. This is a democratic society. We must operate and do our things. The business of government, the business of provision of security must be done within the confines of rule of law. Okay. All right. This is what is the requirement. And, sure, okay, okay. We, and what is what is expected of security forces to do under a rule of law setting? You apprehend, you detain, you investigate, you interrogate, and prosecute, and let 
is guys first the the, 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 the law. Okay. All right. And except we are we have so we, said so that we the okay, system okay. that we cannot trust the judiciary to do their own part. It's okay, okay. But if all of us are not supposed to do, then we should have problem. All right. Um, Mr. Kerike, we're out of time for this conversation. Um, but of course, your points have been very strongly made. Thank you so much for speaking with us. And uh, we look forward to you know, having you. another conversation yes. with you on uh, similar issues. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. All right. Um, you yeah, pretty strong points that he made. You know, and of course, the arguments you know, are numerous you know, with regards to you know, this issue. There's those who are for it, you know, because, well, they believe that sometimes you need to, you know, put the law aside, you know, and, you know, solve a, a problem, sort mm -hmm. of a, a, a cut out, Indeed. you know, cancer. But, Others you know, are even saying that they feel the president should have put a stronger message out by coming out, you know, on a live broadcast to publicly condemn terrorism and give the shooting site order himself, not uh, sending the messages through his media raid. So there's well, so there's like a diverse was, opinion on this on this shooting site issue. But yes, we're might turning now to much. discuss uh, issues in Ogun State and a possible refugee crisis. We'll clarify that with reps of Ogun State government after the break.